All right, so I finally have all of my Clash of Steel stuff. Quite amazing. We did have a bit of a delay, but that's what happens when you forget to do breaker checks on a quantum ton seagoing leviathan. There are also sub boxes you can get. This is what your normal boxes look like for expansions. Weirdly enough, the boxes and some of these seem to come with these little cards in them which I don't think they work presently, but they should be working here in the near future. We don't know yet, so we're going to find out. And you get one per box. So it's one of those things where, you know, I have, I have some questions. But still, that, that's besides the point. Clash of Steel, they also release at the same time Late War Leviathans by PDF. That is great, because a lot of people have been slow to jump on this game, but they've said, I wouldn't mind using these tanks in Flames of War. Well, here you go. The Late War Leviathans is a project that has been in the making for a while. It was actually an internet PDF back in the day, but now we have it officially through Battlefront Games. They're not releasing separate boxes for Flames of War. You can take the boxes from Clash of Steel and use their contents in Flames of War using Late World Leviathans. These don't come with additional commanders or decals. They do come with an assembly guide and that little card I showed you. But these things, you can just buy them and use these Pershings in Flames of War. Now, when it comes to Late War Leviathans, some of the lists in there are very rational, but for the most part, it just allows you to play your forces from Clash of Steel in Flames of War. Although, like they mentioned in the actual PDF itself, if you want to play a normal game of Flames of War, you have these point values to work with, and the point values from Late War Leviathans are not friendly to taking tons and tons and tons of super heavy tanks. When it comes to the difference between Clash of Steel and Late War Leviathans, the army lists are about the same, although each nation, except for the United States, tends to have a few little add-on anti-aircraft assets, as well as the British get an extra American. Well, they, they get to use it too, but you get the idea. It's, they get to use the Chaffee as their scout vehicle. Fun, right? The thing I like the most about it, what we have with each and every list, at the bottom of each list, you'll see a little box that says Wild Card. That is the finest way to play Late War Leviathans. You want to bring a single mouse in your Berlin list? There you go. You can do it. You want to bring a few experimental IS tanks with the rest of your jumble? You can do it. There's nothing stopping you. The only thing stopping you from mixing the Clash of Steel Leviathans with Flames of War is the consent of your opponent. I don't think that it's considered free reign to use. You mention to your opponent you want to play Leviathans-based games or use those tanks, and they say yes or no about it. There's a few other things I want to mention. On the pre-release copy that a lot of sites got for Late War Leviathans, there was a typo that makes a lot of difference. This is the T-54. The T-54 here has an anti-tank rating of 17. That is incorrect. Both in Clash of Steel and in the mass release version that we the people got, it's an anti-tank rating of 15. So that is the actual rating of your T-54-1 prototype tanks. However, I do see parts to make the T-54 and T-55 proper, and something tells me anti-tank 16, front armor 13. I think you guys will be happy with that. I'm going to keep this video short, but let me tell you something. I plan on making two other videos. One, I want to deep dive into this game and tell you what I think about the entirety of the rule set and how the game plays out. And two, I'm going to yell at the Soviet players. Because most Soviet players are good, but as always, a bunch of dumbasses show up on the internet and say, Hey, Soviets are bad! It's like, well, if you play them like they're supposed to be some kind of amazing godsend elite, of course they're bad, because you're buying your own propaganda. The truth behind playing the Soviets, I will show in a separate video. Because guess who's a Soviet player? I am. And I've won with them plenty of times before in Flames of War. So, Clash of Steel will show me playing a Soviet army, and I'm going to win with it too. And I'm going to kill mouses with it too. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed your Clash of Steel. I hope you enjoy Late War Leviathans if you don't have Clash of Steel. In any case, thanks very much for jumping into this crazy bandwagon of 
amazingly weird hypothetical tanks. I hope you have a great rest of your week.